I would get in trouble this morning if I also did not, because uh, I know that she will go back and she will watch this. So happy Mother's Day to my mom, the best mom in the world. Uh, I love you. I'm so grateful for you. I would not be standing where I am today without you. You are my best friend and... I will cry if I keep going. I love you. Um, I also just wanted to say happy Mother's Day to my mother-in-law. How many of us know that not all in-laws are the best, right? But mine, I'm so grateful. I love my in-laws. They are absolutely a blessing. My mother-in-law is a prayer warrior. I mean, you need somebody to march around Jericho, that girl's got it going. She will do it time and time again. So happy Mother's Day to my mother-in-law, the best ever. So as I was preparing for my message today, um, I actually have a few, we have like a few uh, people who are getting out of college and were asking about some like job openings. And so I was looking for some jobs, helping them out. And I came across this this job opening, I want to share it with you guys. It was for director of operations, um, and the qualifications were it was 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, you need to be able to draw. You need to be able to be a pretty good cook. You need to be able to be a personal trainer. You need to plan events, write, be able to teach, too. You need to be okay with blood. You need to be a therapist, a motivational speaker, uh, a negotiator, a really good negotiator, uh, a driver, a nutritionist. You need to be able to stand up most of the day. You actually don't get breaks, um, and you need to do it with a smile on your face without complaining. So is there anybody in the room this morning that wants that? And I oh, forgot to, to mention, the, the pay is, well, there's no pay. It's just pro bono. So is there anybody that wants that job in the room? You do. Great. All the moms in the room, I hope you raised your hand this morning because that is you. You do it all. You are the director of operations in your house. You wear many hats, and somehow we do it with a smile on our face, and it is by the grace of God. Can I get a good amen? Amen. So today is obviously all about moms. Um, I was praying a lot about this message, like Noah said. Um, it's really hard to get everything that motherhood is in 35 minutes, how do you do that? That's just impossible. Um, and so there's definitely a lot that um, I was thinking about, but I believe that what God has put on my heart today is um, what is right and what is for you guys. And so I'm really excited. But as I was praying, I know that there are a lot of different types of moms in the room this morning. I know that there are moms who are celebrating I know that there are moms in mourning. I know that there are moms who are waiting. I know that there are moms that feel like they're on the mountaintop. I know that there are moms who feel like they're in the valley right now. I know that we have people who are missing their moms. I know that we have spiritual moms in here, foster moms. I know the joy that is carried in this room this morning but I also know the sorrow and the pain that is carried in this room this morning. And so my prayer for, your, for you today and what has been all week is that no matter what life looks like for you today, I pray that you are reminded that God is a God of peace that surpasses all understanding, that he is a God that is near and he was for you, that he is a God of miracles and a God of power, that he is a God who is good and he can be trusted. Women in this room, God is with you and he is for you. I want to remind you this morning that the Bible is filled with stories of people going through valleys, going through hardships and trials. But the hand of God and the favor of God never left their life. God is still at work. He is still the author. And so I believe that today he wants to speak to all of us in this room this morning. No matter what your life looks like right now, no matter what challenges are before you, I believe that God has a word for all of us in this room this morning. So Jesus, I just, I ask that you would just decrease me, Father, and increase you. I pray for your word this morning, God. I pray for your truth. 
I pray for every mom in this room, every woman in this room who desires to be a mom. God, I pray for your Holy Spirit to just rest on us this morning, God, that we would hear your heart this morning and we would feel your presence, that you would do what only you could do, Father. I'm making room for you, God, that I may just be a vessel, God, for what you want to say. We give you praise and we give you all the glory this morning and everybody said, amen, amen. So about a year ago, I thought that I had being a mom all under control. That would have made Lion, what, maybe barely even a year. Um, If you had asked me how being a mom was going, I probably just would have responded humbly and said, it's going pretty good. But on the inside, I thought I was crushing it, guys. I was like, I've got this. Like, I've got this down. I had one kid. He slept most of the day. He ate pretty much anything we gave to him. Um, He could barely talk, barely walk. He was a late bloomer. He didn't walk till he was like 15 months old. So if you're in that stage, don't worry, because then when they start, they don't stop. But We also had family that lived near us, which mean we had help when we needed with him. And so it was easy, so I thought. Uh, We could take him pretty much everywhere that we wanted to go. It was easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl, you know what I mean? But now, now I got two kiddos. They're only 19 months apart. My oldest is faster than me. He learns how to say no. And he's on a very strict diet of french fries, potato chips, potatoes, really any version of a potato. But thankfully, he likes pouches, and there's some, like, spinach snuck in those pouches, so I'm just really grateful for those. Um, We're on a strict diet of pretty much carbs right now. My daughter just started to walk, like, this week, which I was not prepared for because she's not even one yet. So that threw me for a loop. Um, She also keeps trying to eat the dog's food right now. I don't really know what that's about, but of course it's only when I'm trying to cook and I have no hands, so I'm just standing there praying like, Lord, just let this not be poisonous. Like, let it at least taste good. Maybe it tastes bad, so she'll spit it out. I don't know. But I have two kids that I, like Noah said, I'm trying to wrangle up Every Sunday morning, I'm trying to get them clothed and fed, and I'm trying to get here, and I want them to be excited about getting here, which means I've got to be excited as well. And so, like he said, the sweat, you just got to let it roll off your body, you know what I mean? And to me, honestly, this is getting personal, okay? Today, I promise you I did it. Every Sunday, I I do this, but it, it is a challenge to remember to brush my teeth. After getting everything done that I need to get done with the kids, I'm always like, did I brush my teeth this morning? I think that I did. And then I'll just, don't worry, I always go back just in case. And I do it. The funny thing is, is motherhood is just when you feel like you've got it, you don't. (laughs) Motherhood is just when you feel like you're in control, you're not. (laughs) So I want to speak this morning to the current moms and the future moms who are like me, who want to be the best mom that they can be, but still fall short. I I do believe that this applies to every person in this room, no matter what stage of life that you're in right now. When you can't control motherhood, when you can't control life, we have to focus on what we can control. There's a lot of stuff about motherhood that you cannot control, but you can control pursuit of holiness in the home. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. It's pursuing holiness in your home. Is there a place that we spend more time in our homes? It could be just me, I guess. Maybe I need to get out a little bit more. It's part of working from home. But I think we all can agree that we spend a lot of times in our home. I believe that if you want to get the fullest, most accurate picture of a person, you do not watch them at work. Don't watch them in public, not even in church. You need to watch them in their home. Nowhere else does the heart overflow so easily than in our home. I believe that the home should be a holy place. Because when a home is a holy place, our kids learn to feel at home in holy places. Our kids learn to be at home in the presence of God. And the presence of God is where we have the advantage. During COVID, uh, Noah and I got super into watching movies and documentaries. I'm sure we 
probably all did. We thought at that point, um, you know, it wasn't going to last long. So I think we went through like every single show on our television in like probably two weeks. It was really bad. But one of our favorites that we watched was actually about Navy SEALs. We love like special forces. And so uh, we were watching this documentary on Navy SEALs, which to me, I think is just so fitting because when I think about a mom, I'm like, they're the Navy SEALs of their home. Like, I'm giving myself, I'm like, that flex. I'm like, moms are like the Navy SEALs of their home. And one of the things that I thought was super interesting was that a Navy SEAL, they're taught to retreat to water whenever they, whenever the fight isn't going well. Um, so they have to go through, like, rigorous training in water so that during a fight, it's actually in the water that they have their greatest advantage. And this one documentary, a Navy SEAL was sharing a story of a time that they were losing in battle really badly. And he just thought to himself, if we can just get back to the water, we can turn this whole thing around. The presence of God for a Christian should be like the water to a Navy SEAL. Are you in trouble? We've got to get to the presence of God. Are you worn down? We have to get into the presence of God. Do you need help? We've got to get into the presence of God. It's because in the presence of God, demons flee. Fear and anxiety have to surrender. Every knee bows and every tongue confesses in the presence of God. I want to talk to you today about pursuing holiness in the home. Specifically, I want to talk about pursuing the presence of God in such a way in our home that the people who are living inside your home are marked by your pursuit of God forever. So how do we create holiness in our homes? I have three things that I wanted to focus on today. The first one is discipleship. A few weeks ago, Grant talked about discipleship as a holy habit. We talk about discipleship a lot here at Way Church. That's our heart. Um, we believe that that's going to be the core of how we grow in our faith. Um, but Grant described discipleship as including someone in your calendar. What easier way to add somebody to what you are already doing than being a mom and having a kid? They don't have a choice, you know what I mean? Like, they're already in there. So the week uh, before, Noah was also talking about we have to train to be like Christ. So when we disciple our kids, we are training them to be like Christ. As a mom who, my oldest is only two and a half, um, and my youngest, uh, Mila, is only about to be one, and so we're, we're really in the stage of milestones. Moms, you know what I'm talking about? Like the milestones that you feel the pressure to hit, all the things that you're like, I've got to focus on, you know, the ones like, I need them to roll over, we need them to sit up, hold their head up, crawling, walking like eating all the food. We're trying to hit all of these milestones. And I bet every mom in the room can agree that you probably didn't want somebody else teaching your kid these milestones, right? You did not want to miss these milestones that your kids were trying to achieve. So like I said, Mila's walking right now, or she's trying to. And I told Noah the other day when I was uh, leaving the house, I was like, listen, if that girl starts taking some steps, You need to gently just sit her back down and tell her she needs to wait until mama gets home because I cannot miss that. I do not want to miss her taking her first steps. You know what else I don't want to miss? I don't want to miss the chance and the opportunity to disciple my own kids. I don't want that job going to anybody else. God has called me to do that. He has called me to show them what it looks like to follow Jesus. He's given me that opportunity, and it's not something that I take lightly. Who is training your child spiritually? Is it you or is it their friends? Is it you or is it YouTube? Is it you or Miss Rachel? (laughs) I think only the moms maybe or babysitters in the room will get get that one, and that one honestly has convicted me because uh, Lion loves some Miss Rachel, but... I also think it has to be you or else it's going to be the world. In Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up your child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. As a mom, it is my personal responsibility to disciple and train my kids. 
So what does discipleship look like with our kids? I want to talk just really practically. I think it looks like prioritizing the house of God and showing them that church matters. Making sure that they are here on Sundays. My mom was a single mom when I was younger, and I'm so grateful that she made church a priority for my brother and I. It was just like anything else in life. If you're not going to miss school, you don't miss church. If you're not going to miss going into work, you don't miss church. If you weren't going to miss showing up to that celebration, we're not missing church. It wasn't an option. It was a priority in our home. I think it looks like teaching them scripture. We just started reading the kids' Bible with Lion. Um, and so learning scripture is, it's so fun to take yourself back to uh, a kid's Bible. It's honestly, I, if I can suggest, if you're having trouble actually reading the Bible right now, get a kid's Bible. It's, it's so beautiful. It kind of just takes you back to the, the simple, like the story at its purest. And so it's been so refreshing and fun to me to go through the Bible with Lion and going through Bible verses that actually here at Way Church, our Way kids help them remember scripture. So right now when you're in service, if your kid is downstairs, I just want to um, encourage you and, and let you know that our Way Rangers down there are teaching them the word of God. They're teaching them biblical truths and scripture, whether they're six months old or whether they're six years old. They are teaching them scripture and getting it into their hearts. And so I'm so grateful for them down there and, and what they are doing. We need to teach them that Jesus lives inside of their hearts. They need to know that wherever they go, God also goes with them. I'm so thankful for a church that helps us equip being able to disciple our kids. I think it looks like telling them the why behind their actions. I think it looks like protecting what they consume and what they don't. Hey, we don't watch that because it does not reflect Christ. Hey, we like that because that actually makes Jesus happy when he sees you be nice to your sister and share your toys and be sweet to her and using our kind words and not our hands. So teaching them, Jesus likes that. He delights in that. We need to make sure that we are the narrators, not the world. I think it also looks like them hearing us say, I'm sorry, when we mess up. When we stumble as parents, as moms, when we do get it wrong, because we will, we want our response to be getting back into the presence of God, worshiping, apologizing, and asking for forgiveness, not behind closed doors, but in front of our kids. They need to see that when we fall short, it's okay because we can get back up. I think it looks like living in private the way that you do in public. These little things, they start to add up. Little by little, you are training them up in the way that they should go. Even when it doesn't feel like it, you are planting a seed after seed, day after day. This will be a message that I know I will have to continuously remind myself because I am just getting started. But I have found myself more and more quoting Galatians 6, 9. It says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Our babies, our kids, they're like seeds. When watered, given sunlight, given shade, pruned, grounded in good soil, they will bloom. And our prayer is that one day they will produce fruit. We are harvesting a beautiful field that is pleasing to the Spirit, and from the Spirit will reap eternal life if we do not give up. The second one today is prayer. I was talking about how my mom is my best friend. I'm so grateful for her. Um, she's the kind of best friend. You know those friends that you have in your life that you call, and you actually have nothing to say to them? You're just like, I wasn't doing anything. I'm hoping they weren't doing anything, so maybe we'll just like do nothing together like over the phone. We'll just sit in silence. That's the relationship I have with my mom. So there's so many times where I'll be on the phone with my mom and Noah will come in and he's like, who are you talking to? And I'm like, my mom. And he's like, why isn't anybody saying anything? Is everything okay? And I'm like, oh yeah, we're just like hanging out. He's like over the phone. And I'm like, yeah, because she's my mom. 
We just want to hang out. We're close. Uh, I call her to talk about, like, the craziest things. I call her to either sit in silence. I call her about the dry shampoo that I just got that smells so good, and I'm telling her that she really needs to get it as well. But I also call her to, to just tell her that life is hard. I call her to tell her that I feel defeated. Um, I ask her for wisdom. I ask questions. I listen to her answers. I ask, am I a good mom? Am I doing it right? How in the world did you do it? I know that when I call my mom, my mom will always listen to me. When you pray, Jesus will always listen. In fact, many times Jesus will answer the exact prayers that we pray. The Bible says in James 5.16, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So why is prayer important for holiness in our home? It's because prayer gets a holy God involved with what's happening in our home. Prayer is partnership with Jesus, and it is a partnership that we need. I cannot do it without him. Moms, there is a real enemy, and he is out for our kids. He is out for our homes. There is a battle that is being fought for the next generation, and it is a spiritual battle first and foremost. In Ephesians 6, 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. You don't need me to stand up here and tell you that there is darkness in our world. You don't need me to, to tell you that. We see it. We hear it. We feel it sometimes. But I want to remind you this morning that we also serve a Savior who has overcome this world. Jesus said that in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the grave. That same Jesus, that same Jesus who overcame the grave was the same Jesus who prayed. He didn't just pray. He prayed often. He prayed without ceasing. Prayer was his natural response. He just did it. If Jesus, being the Holy One, knew that his first response needed to be prayer, what makes us think that we can win our battles without it? Tony Evans put it this way. Prayer is not the pregame. It is the game. It's not the pre-battle. It is the war. Every significant movement in the history of Christianity was birthed first and foremost in prayer. You want to know how we win this battle of protecting holiness in our home? It's the power of God. You want to know how you get the power of God? Prayer. Jesus told the disciples, when you pray. Not if you pray, not should you pray, but when you pray. It's what happens when we pray. When you pray, things change. When you pray, people change. When you pray, you change. Amen. Imagine what could happen when we have a world full of moms who get on their knees and start praying. The enemy doesn't stand a chance against a praying mom. I was raised by a mom who lived this out so well. Um, she taught us how to pray about everything. I mean everything, big and small. Even on our way to school in the mornings, um, we always prayed about our day. If we had a test or um, if we just wanted a good day, we just, we always prayed. Taking the opportunity in the car to pray over that day. We even prayed if we saw an ambulance drive by us, we stopped and she made us pray over the people in the ambulance and over our healthcare workers. She, she made us pray over everything. And there was this one time I turned 16 and I lost the keys to my car and I was so late for dance practice. And guys, my dance teacher, you, just, you don't be late, okay? So I was like so stressed. And I've been trying to find my keys for like 30 minutes at this point. And I go to my mom and I'm like, mom, I cannot find my keys. Do you know where they are? Can I take your car? And she was like, no, you cannot take my car. And secondly, have you prayed about it? And I was like, no, I haven't prayed about it. I'm just trying to find my keys. And she was like, why don't you go pray about it? And I was like, yes, ma'am, I will pray about it. Dear Lord, I just pray right now that in the name of Jesus, you will help bring back my remembrance to where I place those keys because if not, I'm going to be in great, great trouble. Thank you, amen. Like it was everything under the sun. 
big and small. She taught me how to pray. Lion was also, he, he was crying the other night. I'm just sharing so many stories about prayer because I think it's so important. Um, Lion was uh, crying the other night when we put him to bed. And it's not like him. Like he usually, thankfully, goes down like pretty easily. But this one night he just kept crying. And so I was like, no, I think it's like something must be wrong. So I'm going to go in there and check on him. And I go in there and I'm like, what's wrong, buddy? And he points and he said, people's. I was like, no, mm -mm, not today, (laughs) absolutely not, not in this house, not in this room, Uh uh-uh, we rebuke it, not today, Satan, not tonight, and so I was like, I don't play with that, I do not play with that. First, I want to tell you that whether your child is one or two, they are smarter than you think, the enemy is still after them, but they also have the presence of God on their life. I believe that he uses children in mighty ways. And so I am so attentive to when he looks at me and he says, peoples are in my room, not today, Satan. So you know what I did? Instead of just looking at him and saying, it's okay, buddy, you're going to be okay. There's no peoples in the room. Like go to bed and walk out the door. I looked at him and I said, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. So I stood there and I held his hands and I started praying with him. I started rebuking anything that was trying to scare my child while he was trying to rest in his home, what should be a holy place. And I said, not today, Lord, we ask for your peace. Lord, that he will have peace and sound mind, that he will have, a, he will have sweet dreams tonight when he sleeps. He will not be fearful So we sat there and we prayed, and I said, amen. He said, amen, I pray, thanks, mommy. And I was like, you are so welcome, buddy. Like, it's in that moment, I stopped, and I said, we're going to do this together because I'm going to show you that when something happens that scares you, our first response is going to be to pray. I left that room, and I'm that mom. I took it a step further. I closed that door, and I just started praying over the door. I started praying over him and Mila's door. I started covering my home with the, with the Holy Spirit for his protection. Lord, grace these walls. Like, let your Holy Spirit run through these walls and through these halls. The enemy has no space here. We can't afford to take this by chance because it is the enemy is real, and he is after our homes. I want my kids to know that when we pray, God moves. Is prayer your steering wheel or is it your spare tire? The third one I want to talk to you about today is faithfulness. Eugene Peterson described faithfulness as long obedience in the same direction. When I think of faithfulness, I think of the word consistency. Being consistent in what God has asked you to do. We've talked about discipleship and prayer, which I think both are so powerful. But I think they become infinitely more powerful when we are consistently practicing them. That's why I want to end with faithfulness. Because if we want holiness in our homes, it can't be just on a Sunday. It can't be just when bad things happen. It has to be something that we seek on a daily basis. I want to show my kids that following Jesus doesn't look like a perfect life, but it looks like, a, it looks like one pursuing a holy life. I want to show them that people may let you down, but God never will. I want my kids to see me running the race faithfully, persevering in obedience, persevering in faithfulness. Matthew 24, 45 Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? Guys, this is the time. This is the time. God was not scared when he chose you to live in this day and age. He was not fearful when he chose your children to live in this world. He didn't choose you by accident to be a parent. He didn't choose you by accident for this time. This is the time you've been called to serve your house. A question that I've been asking myself since becoming a mom is, what's your game plan for faithfulness? It's like the old quote, if you fail to plan, then you've planned to fail. 
I love that quote. It's so true, especially since becoming a mom. There are so many to-dos that I feel like I have each and every day. And I know that if I don't plan out my day, my day is going to look so chaotic. We have to make a game plan so that when life happens, it doesn't look chaotic, but it looks unwavering. What's your game plan for discipleship, for your prayer life, for obedience? What do you need to change in your calendar to end faithful? Maybe you're here and you feel like you've already blown it. Maybe you feel like a failure. Maybe you feel like a bad mom. I know what that feels like, you're not alone. But can I just speak a word of truth over you this morning? You might have failed, but you're not a failure. You might have done a bad thing, but you're not a bad mom. You might have made a mistake, but you are not a mistake. You might have failed at faithfulness in one season, but you can try again in this season. In 2 Timothy 2.13, even when we are faithless, he is faithful, for he cannot deny himself. You can keep going because Jesus has not given up on you. You can be faithful because Jesus will always be faithful to you. You can be the mom, the wife, the daughter, the son, the husband, the friend that you have been called to be because he gives you the strength to do it. Don't grow weary in pursuing holiness in your home. You may feel like you're in a barren season, but you need to keep going because you may birth in Isaac one day. Don't grow weary in pursuing holiness, mom. When it feels so overwhelming, wearing so many different hats, find your rest beside still waters. Don't grow weary in pursuing holiness in that home, even if you have no kids in the home anymore. God may be calling you to step into a season of being a spiritual mom to those who need it. I think we have such a, like a unique space here in Nashville. There are so many people who came, who moved here without their family, who are looking for spiritual moms and dads. They're looking for a place. They're looking for a holy home to rest in where they can find Jesus. Because sometimes people are gonna be more inclined to coming into our homes before they are at the church. And so does your home look like God? Is it, a, is it a holy home where the holy God has been invited into, where he's been ushered in? We want to make our homes a holy place so that we can usher in a holy God. You can do it though. You can do it. He's going with you. He's called you to it. He's never leaving you, forsaken you. He goes before you, behind you, all around you. As I was preparing, I, I was reading just about the story of Mary because I just, I don't know if somebody came to me and said, you're gonna birth the savior of the world and you're not even married yet like how I would handle that. That would just like terrify me. I don't know what my response would be if I'm honest. In Luke 1, 37 through 38 says, for no word from God will ever fail. I wanna repeat that because we teach that the Bible is fully truth. It is fully God. It is the place where we run to says, for no word from God will ever fail. So when you open that book up and you read his word, it will never fail. Mary answers by saying, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. I have no idea how she responded in that way, but I pray more and more every day, Lord, Help me look like Mary when you ask me to do these hard things. 
that my first response would be that I am your servant. May your word be fulfilled through me. But you know, I was thinking about it and praying about it. You know how I think Mary was able to respond in that way? It's because she had spent time in holy places. She had already made room for the Holy Spirit. She wasn't frightened by it. It was a place of comfort for her. She found favor with the Lord. It's because she spent time with him. She created holy spaces for God to dwell in. And so when he asked her to do something that seemed impossible, she said, sure, I'm your servant. It didn't scare her because she spent time in holy places. No matter what your season looks like today, we have such a unique opportunity. We have way groups even all across the city of Nashville. Whether you're in a season, maybe you're in college, maybe you don't have kids in your home anymore, maybe you're expecting, maybe you're desiring. I wanna tell you right now that God is still using you in the season that you are in. There's no waiting for something to happen. He's called you into this time to usher in the presence of a holy God in your home. So that when people walk into your home, they feel something different. They feel at peace. They feel at home. They feel like they are loved, that they're not forgotten. They feel safe and all of the things that they are feeling that we have the opportunity to create in our homes. We're gonna be able to say it's a holy God. He's been invited here. He's been invited into my home because this is a holy place for a holy God to do what he can only do in my home. I believe that this is how we're gonna reach the lost. I feel this so heavy on my heart. People are hurt from church. They're hurt from their own mothers. They're hurt from their own family. We have a, a world that's hurting right now. I think that we have the opportunity to invite people into our homes, into our holy homes. And we're gonna be able to show them who Jesus is. I want to encourage you that this message is for everybody. A holy home isn't just for a mom. A holy home isn't just for uh, parents. A holy home is for you. It is for all of you. So do you want to make your home a holy place? A place where a holy God can live and dwell. Jesus, we thank you so much, Father, that you are holy. There is nobody like you, God. We serve a holy God. Father, I pray that as we seek to be more like you, as we seek your holiness, that you would make us look more like you, that we would look more like you, Father, that we would be able to usher in a holy presence. I pray for the moms in this room this morning, God, I pray that you would give them strength and courage, Father, to persevere in obedience, God, to persevere in the call that they have on their life, to serve their home, to raise up children, to teach them in the ways that they should go, to love you, Father. When they feel weak, Father, I pray that you pick up their arms, Father, carry them. I pray that you bless them, Father, for the sacrifices that they make. I pray for everyone in this room this morning, God, that you will just touch their lives, touch their homes, God, that your Holy Spirit will rest in their homes, Father, that when people may enter, they will feel your holy presence. They will know that something is different, God. They'll be able to say it's the presence of God. It's his peace that surpasses all understanding. Help us make our homes look more like you, Father. 
go before us, God. Protect our children, protect the next generation. Purify their hearts. God, we love you. Thank you for going before us. Thank you for walking beside us. Thank you that you've never left us, that you love us, that you've died for us. You are holy, you are sovereign, you are good, you are still at work, you still have authority, you still sit on the throne, you are mighty, you do miracles. We are so faith-filled because we know we serve a faithful God. We hold tight to your word, tight to your promises, God. We love you. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we all said, amen, amen.